Just tell me what we have done in last class. Yes, Muhammad Umair. Sir, we were doing some questions. Do you have any doubt from last class to any one of you in equation of motion? No, sir. Nida, Rehab, any doubt? No, sir. Yes, Muhammad Umar. I'd explain you how to calculate average velocity by three different ways. First, if there is no relation between x and t, so it will be x1 plus x2 plus so on to xn divided by n as your first formula. But if time gap for each intervals are equal, this average velocity would be equals to v1 plus v2 so on to vn divide by n or simply arithmetic mean of all individual speed and in third part if path length are equal so it will be equals to 1 by v1 1 by v2 and so on to 1 by v these are three different formula related to how to calculate average velocity depending upon different different conditions. Is it clear, Muhammad Umar? Yes. If there is no relation between distance and time, so just use this expression. If time gaps are equal, means t1 is equals to t2 is equals to tn. If all time gaps are equal, so use this expression. If path length are equal, so just use this expression. Any more doubt? Muhammad Umar. Okay. I'm defining one more term related to equation of motion. One is, what do you mean by reaction time? I think you all have learned this, stimulus and response. Reha, do you have any idea about these two different words? What do you mean by stimulus and response? Nida? Yes, Muhammad Ahmed, I'm asking. Do you have any idea about these two different words? Stimulus is nothing but any change in surrounding which will affect your body and due to which 
your body will respond against it. So stimulus is nothing but any change or surrounding change due to which your body gets responded against it. Then you use the stimulus and response again. So the total duration of time for a stimulus and then against it, your body gets responded back is called reaction time. Is it clear? So reaction time is the total duration in which body will respond against any stimulus is called reaction time. And this reaction time would vary from individual to individual depending upon his activity or his quickness. So let's say a driver driving a car at some initial velocity u at this instant. And you observe an individual in front of him at some distance. On observing, you must apply brake during this particular time or during this reaction time to get responded back against this car, this car will move to this particular point. During this movement, from this point to this point, there would be no acceleration in this car. So this car will move with the same velocity as it was initially moving. So using second equation of motion, S is equals to u t plus half kg squared, S is zero. So the distance traveled is A zero, which is equals to u times t r. It means distance traveled by this car during reaction time is u times t r. Is it clear till this part? Uh, sir, I wasn't able to understand. Could you repeat? Which part? Stimulus and response? Uh, yes, the whole part. Okay, good. A stimulus is nothing but any surrounding change due to which your body gets responded back. Okay? So the total duration of time in which your body gets responded back against any stimulus is called as reaction time. Let's say there is an individual or driver which is driving a car at some initial velocity u. At this instant, he observed there is an individual in front of him. So on observing, he must apply brake to get stopped at some finite distance. So the total duration of time on observing and get responded back by applying brake, the total duration is called reaction time. During this reaction time, there will be no acceleration or deceleration in the movement of car. So A would be zero. So using the second equation of motion, S is equals to ut plus half A T squared. A is zero. So you will get S is equals to U times T. This is the distance traveled by this car during reaction time. So this is distance traveled during reaction time. Nina, is it clear? We have in doubt? No, sir. Now, driver would apply brake to come to rest after some finite distance, let's say at this point, so that there would be no collision between them. 
So the final velocity of this car would be zero at this instant. During this motion, since driver has applied brakes, so it will return. So brakes are applied. So it will decelerate at some acceleration A. So using third equation of motion, V square, U square, minus of two AS, as A would be negative, so it's as it's decelerating. Since final velocity is zero, as the board is getting stopped, so if you calculate S, so it will be U square divided by two. This S is stopping distance, so call it as ST, the total distance from this point to this point. This is called stopping distance. They have any doubt to this part? No, sir. Okay, just write it down. Mohammed Umar. Mohammed Umar. Just read out this statement. Reaction time is nothing but the total duration taken by individual or his brain to get responded back against any stimulus or against any change in front of him. Is it clear? Suppose if you pinch a pin into your finger. The total duration of time taken by your brain to get responded back against this pinch, you have to shift your finger away from pinch, is called a reaction time. Is it clear? Do you all till this part? Yes, sir. Two minutes. We will apply break at this instant. Is observing the individual at this instant and his mind get responded back to apply break at this instant. So the total duration of time traveled by this car from this point of observation 
to get responded back to this point is called reaction time. Okay, Mohammed Amir. Done. A car is moving at 72 kilometer per hour. Find total distance traveled by it if reaction time. of drive it is 0.5 seconds and deceleration by way is 2 meter per second square. In this question, we have initial velocity in kilometer per hour. So first of all, convert this value in meter per second. So how to convert? Just multiply it by five by eighteen to convert it meter per second. Next is reaction time, which is 0.5 seconds, and next deceleration or retardation is two meter per second square. So just use these values and try to find reaction time or the distance traveled during reaction time, SR, and the distance traveled during stopping distance and add them. Try to solve. Distance traveled during reaction time is D times TR. U is given, TR is given, just put the values. 
Similarly, distance traveled to a stop is u squared by two times of a. U is given, a is given. Just put the values. Tr is reaction time. I will explain you One more time, just serious. What is? <clears throat> is it acceleration or deceleration? Deceleration is itself a of acceleration. So negative negative becomes positive. I have written here already. So if you simplify this equation, you will get this expression. So you have to use only this. Okay. Yusuf, any doubt? No, sir. Nida, just you check your calculation for stopping distance. You have done a little mistake. Mohammed Umar, what is written here? Nida, just check your calculation. Yes, Umar. So if you simplify it, 18 in four times becomes 72. 
So this will give you 20 meter per second. Yes, Amar. Good, yourself. Good, Nida. Yes, Kumar. SR is distance. <clears throat> okay, Muhammad Umar. So it will be in terms of meter only. Okay, good. Try to solve the next part. Rehab, just send me your answer. Good, Umar. Mohammed Umar, your answer is wrong. Let's see. U is which car is moving, that is 20, and rational time is 0 0.5. So if you solve, you will get just 10 meters. Next part, u is 20, so it will be 20 into 20, divide by 2, and a is just 2. So if you simplify it, you will get 100 meters. So the total distance traveled by car to get fund is stop for the sum of these two terms, so it would be 110. Is it clear, Rishan? Riba? Yes, sir. Do you have any doubt in this part? To any one of you? No, Muhammad Umar, just see this. What I have used here, is it negative or positive? Due to this deceleration, okay? Now, if you simplify it, your answer would be only this. Is there any negative sign here? Similarly, in this part, since this is your deceleration, so it is already in negative sign. So if you apply third equation of motion, so it will be in negative sign. So it will be negative. Final velocity will be zero to get a stop. So if you move this to the other side, it will be two times of A is in positive equals to U square. And if you solve for S, you will get U square divided by two A. Is there any, any negative sign here?
Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Muhammad Umar, is it clear? I have used positive sign here. Just use A as A R or it is nothing but retardation. So you in this formula, I have already used negative sign. It means it is retarding or decelerating. So this will do a retardation. And on simplifying you, you will get S stopping distance, U squared by two times of A R. A is retardation or deceleration. I'm taking only magnitude here. Mohammed Umar, is it clear? So this is all about equation of motion or uniformly accelerated motion along horizontal line. The next and very important part of this chapter is motion under gravity or free fall. Mahmoud Umar, just open your mind. And first of all, listen my word carefully. In this part, I'm giving you some assumption or some basic concept on the basis of which you will be able to calculate whole body. Just forget all of the previous concept which you have, you have learned in your previous classes. First, for any problem, take point of throne of body to be origin. On the basis of this origin, since in coordinate system, all of the quantity above to origin would be along positive y-axis. So it will be taken as positive and along downward direction towards negative y-axis, it will be taken as negative. So using this, Upward, all term would be positive and downward, all term would be negative. Mohammed Umar, is it clear to this part? Next is, since gravity always acts towards the surface of earth or towards the center of earth. So it will be always in downward direction. And since in downward direction or towards negative y-axis, it will be taken as negative. So gravity will be always taken as negative. Since gravity acts downward, so taken as negative always. It will depend upon what I am taking, 9.8 or 10. Is it clear? Third is object always acquire velocity of system whose it is a part. Suppose if you are moving in a car and if car is traveling at 20 meter per second, so what will be your velocity? 
it must be 20 meter per second so that you will move along with car at each instant. Otherwise, if velocity of car and you would be different, you will cover different path along or in different time interval. So you won't be at same position for the same time interval. That's why object always acquire velocity of system whose it is a part. The third is object will always acquire velocity of system whose it is a part. Is it clear to you all to this part? Mohammed Umar, just ask if you have any doubt in these three statements. Or if you ask why I'm taking gravity to be negative. Just see in third part, object always acquire velocity of system whose it is a part. Suppose if you are moving in a car, which is moving at 20 meter per second, and if you are sitting inside it, so what will be your velocity with respect to rho? I think it would be 20 meter per second, just as velocity of car, so that car and you both will be at same position at same instant of time or moving with same velocity together. Is it clear? That's why I find object always acquire velocity of system whose it is a part. Now, on the base of this, I'm giving you some more relationship. Suppose this is surface of earth. And from which a body is thrown upward at some initial velocity u. So it will attain some height to reach its maximum and then turn back to hit the ground again with some velocity. So from this, this is your highest point. At highest point, Object will stay for a moment and then turn its direction to fall down. So final velocity at highest point would be zero. And still at this point, it must be accelerating due to gravity and this must be acting along downward direction. So it will be asked to give an example of a body which having zero velocity but still accelerating. So you will say at the highest point of free fall, object will have zero velocity but still it is accelerating. Mohammed Umar, any time till this part? Since this is your highest point, and initially body was going up till this point, and then reverse its direction to go down. So at this highest point, object will momentarily comes to rest 
to change its direction. That's why I have taken V at its highest point to be zero. Is it clear? Yes. Because at the highest point, object has momentarily comes to rest to change its direction. That's why velocity to be zero. They have, is it clear to this part? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if we define for time, so the total time taken by this object to move from ground to this highest point is termed as time of ascent. And similarly, the total time taken by this object to descend from this highest point to the ground is called time of descent. So just remember some rule for same horizontal level means at this point time of ascent is equals to time of descent total time taken by this object to go up and return back is called time of flight which is Tf, which is nothing but time of ascent plus time of descent. And since these two are equal, so you will call it as two times of time of ascent is equal to time of flight or two times of time of descent. Is it clear? Gravity always acts towards the surface of Earth, so it will be taken as negative according to the coordinate system. Okay. <clears throat> Next is, if I'm defining at same horizontal level, let's say at this point. So there will be velocity of body on going up, let's say V1. And similarly, there would be another velocity at this point of same object while going down. So you will say at the same horizontal level, man two of these two terms must be equal. So V1 should be equals to V2. And the direction is in opposite sense. So one would be along positive direction and the other would be along negative direction. But I'm taking on the magnitude function. That's why I have used modulus. Is it clear? Nida, any doubt till this part? No, sir. Okay, just write it down. <clears throat> Muhammad Umar, if V1 would be 4 meter per second while going up, so V2 must be equal to minus 4 meter per second. Minus is due to its direction. As V1 is going up, which is towards positive y-axis, so it would be positive. And V2 is going down, so it would be negative 4 meter per second but the magnitude of velocity v1 and v2 since they are at same horizontal level must be equal <clears throat> 
Rishan, any doubt? Good. Have you all done till this part? Yusuf? One minute, sir. Okay. Mohammed Umar, have you done? First, lost your phone, which means initial loss to, and second, maximum height it will attain. I'm giving you some hint how to solve it. Use gravity to be 10 meter per second square. We have four seconds as total time taken by object to go up and return back. So it will be nothing but time of flight. The first is time of flight is four seconds. On the basis of which, just calculate time of ascent. I've given you a relationship between these two terms. Now we have time of ascent. We have acceleration due to gravity. Just use first equation of motion as final velocity at highest point of projection would be zero. So just use first equation of motion, V is equals to V plus A times T. V is zero, A is minus G, which is minus 10 meter per second square, and T is time of ascent. You will calculate from this. Just put all the values in this equation, you will get initial velocity. Similarly, use third equation, which is u squared plus two times of a into s. So s will be h, acceleration would be minus g, and at highest point, velocity would be equals to zero. 
Just simplify these two equations, you'll get your answer. Nina, is it clear? Yes, sir. Deba, any doubt? Just try to solve. We have to find the value of u from first part. A is given, is given, or t. You can calculate using time of ascent or time of flight. And next, you have to calculate height attained by the body using third equation of motion. Mumbai Dubai, just send me a question.
Yusuf, just check your calculation. There is one relation between time of facing and time of flight, which is t divided by 2. So if time of flight is 4 divided by 2 is just 2 seconds. So use this time, this part, a is minus 10. So you will get initial loss to your projection. So b is 0. u we have to calculate. Acceleration is minus of gravity and time of ascent is 2. So 2 into 10 becomes 20. So u would be equals to 20 meter per second. Is it clear? Just use this value in this equation. You will get value for maximum height attained by the body. Normal number, I will define it in calculus part or non formally accelerated. Now, if you put all the values in this equation, you will get V to be zero. U we have calculated as 20 to 20. Plus two times A, A is minus of 10 and S is high. So if you move this term to left side, it will become 20 into H is equals to 20 into 20. So H will be equals to just 20 into 20. Is it clear, Nida? Rehab, is it clear? Yes, sir. Mahmoud, do you have any doubt in this calculation? Have you all done to this part? There's one more concept related to this. Dropping of a body. First, Let's say if a body is dropped from any building. Let's say this part. Since this building is at stationary or is a stationary object. So its velocity would be zero. Object always acquire velocity of system whose it is a path. So 
this particular object would have zero velocity initially. So let's draw this point to be origin. So initial velocity of this particular object would be zero. Total height of this building would be along negative y-axis with respect to this origin. So this height would be negative. And next, gravity always act along downward direction. So it will be negative. So S would be equals to minus of H and acceleration would be equals to minus of G. Initial velocity would be equals to zero. Using these terms, you will find time taken, final velocity of hitting the ground and so on. Is it clear to this part? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Similarly, I'm defining one more relation. Suppose if there is hot air balloon, which is going up with some velocity initial. Let's say it would have some initial velocity V1 and there is a ball inside it. Now, if this ball is dropped into air, Nira, just tell me in which direction this ball will move, upward direction Make it or downward direction. Yes, Nida. In which direction this ball will move? Upward or downward? Downward. Okay. Riba, just tell me what will be its initial velocity? Riba? Zero. Zero. Why it will be zero? Just read out this statement, third statement. Object will always acquire velocity of system whose it is a part. If it is a part of a stationary body, it will have zero initial velocity. And if it is a part of some moving object, it will have velocity equals to that particular system. Is it clear? Yeah. So according to this, since this hot air balloon is going up, having velocity V1, so what would be the velocity of this ball? V0, and it would be along upper direction. Is it clear? Yes. So Nida, tell me, in which direction now it will move, upward or downward? They have, in which direction this body will move? Yusuf? Yes, sir. What's the question? In which direction this ball would move? Sir, downward. In which direction they have lost to? Uh, sir, upward, upward. So why do you go in downward direction? So due to this loss, uh, it will move to some height in upward direction and then return back to the ground. So its motion would be like this. Is it clear? 
Yes, sir. Now, take this particular point to be origin. So let's say this particular point to be origin. So upward all quantity would be positive and downward all term would be negative. So we have two different paths using this. First, height from this point to this point. It is going up, so it will be taken as positive. At this highest point, velocity would be zero. So for this path, S would be plus H, A would be minus of G, and initial velocity would be plus of B. This is only for this upward motion. Now, the next part is to define, let's say this ball is dropped from some height h above to this particular ground. Now, since this is origin, so all quantity would be along downward direction taken as negative. So for this part, h would be negative. Acceleration would again be negative. Initial velocity would be seen as it initial term. So using this, you will calculate time taken, final velocity of the thing, and so on. Is it clear to you all till this part, or do you have any doubt? Nida, any doubt? No, sir. I have defined this particular motion into two parts. First, on going this particular ball from this point of zone to the highest point. So it must acquire or cover this much amount of height while going up. This height is along positive y-axis, so it will be plus. Acceleration would be always along downward direction, so it will be negative. Initial velocity of object is along positive y coordinates, so it will be positive. Similarly, it will have another segment. Let's say this ball is dropped from some height h above the ground. So this h from this origin is along negative y axis, so it will be taken as negative. So on the basis of these two expressions, you will calculate different different expression, time, velocity, height, and so on. Just write it down. I'm giving you some examples related to this. In first diagram, we have a building from which a body is dropped or being dropped. Since building is initially at rest, so always body always acquire velocity of system whose it is found. Since building is at rest, so initial velocity of dropping of this particular body must be zero. And since height of this particular building with respect to this origin is along negative y-axis, that's why I've taken negative h and gravity always acts along downward direction. So it will be taken as negative. Do we have more down? Or it's clear now? Good.
Are you all written till this point? One minute, sir. These are certain representation. It may vary from books to book. Okay. In some book, initial velocity would be written as u, and some other it will be written as v naught. In some book, displacement is written in terms of x. In some other, it will be written in terms of S. So these are nothing but representation, which may vary from books to books. I'm giving one question related to this. A hot air balloon. <clears throat> X is final displacement and X naught is initial displacement. So the difference of these two would be the net displacement. A hot air balloon is ascending at 12 meter per second. Drops a ball when it is at 65 meter above the ground. Fine. First, <clears throat> time of flight or the total time taken to hit the ground. And second, velocity with which It will hit the ground. So this is same as previous part, as this part. So you have to use only this expression. You will get the required answer. Just use the previous concept and apply second equation of motion, first equation of motion to find time of flight and velocity of hitting the ground respectively.
this is your initial velocity plus 12 as it will be your non positive y axis. This is your height from which body has dropped. So S will be equals to minus 65 meter. Just use gravity to be 10 meter per second square. Use second equation of motion, you will get time of flight. Then use first equation of motion, you will get velocity of fitting the now. Try to solve. Using second equation of motion, S is equal to ut plus half it is squared. S is minus 65. U is 12 into T. A is gravity, which is minus 10 times T squared. 2 into 5. Move all term towards left. So it will be 5 T squared minus of 12 p minus 65 is equal to zero. I defined you in mathematical physics how to solve any quadratic equation. So just multiply this first part with the last one. So it will be five into 65. Now just factorize it. So it will be five into 30. Now arrange the factor to get the middle part. So it will be five into five, that is 25 and 30. So it will be five T squared minus 25 T plus 13 T minus 65 is equals to Z. Now rearrange or take common from these two parts, you will get time of life. Is it clear, Yusuf? To this part? Yes, sir. Nida, any doubt? No, sir. Just solve this expression to get time of flight, put it in first equation of motion to get final velocity.
मोहम्मद उमर जस्ट सी ए बाई एस इज नेगेटिव मेदा जस्ट चेक द साइन Yes, we have put it to zero to get the value of t to be positive. So, if you put this particular expression to equals to zero, you will get time. मेदा जस्ट सेकेंड कैलकुलेशन रेहा इट विल बी प्लस फाइव यस मोहम्मद उमर इट्स योर विश <clears throat> If you solve this expression, you will get five t plus thirteen and t minus five is equal to zero. This particular expression will give you time to be negative, but if you equate this term to be zero, you will get time is equal to just five seconds. Now, using first equation of motion, which is equal to v is equal to u plus a times t. Yusuf, what is the value of u? So twelve. Value of acceleration. It is so the 10. gravity. So it will be minus ten. And time. We have five calculated seconds. time as five seconds. So just simplify this equation. You will get final velocity of hitting the ground. Is it clear to you all? Yes, sir. Mohammed Umar, any doubt? They have any doubt? हो सर सो ऑन सॉल्विंग यू गेट फाइव इंटू टेन फिफ्टी माइनस ट्वेल्व दैट इज थर्टी एट मीटर पर सेकेंड ओके नीता Muhammad Ahmed. In this expression, I am shifting this and this to the other side. So, if you move this to the other side, it will become minus twelve, and here it is minus five. So, on moving to the other side, it will become plus five t square. Is it clear? Muhammad Umar, is it clear?
I'm giving you some relation on the basis of this free fall. We call it as Galileo's odd number relation. Galileo's odd number relation. Let's say if a body is dropped from any height, let's say from this point, since this particular velocity is dropped from any stationary body, so its initial velocity would be zero. But we have to calculate the ratio of height covered by the body for equal time gap. Let's say time duration from this point to this point is t. Similarly, from this point to this point is t. And from this point to this point is t. So the height covered by this body from this point to this point is h1. From this point to this point is h2. And from this point to this point is h3. So in this part, if body is free falling, So we have to calculate the ratio of height covered by the body in equal time gap. The ratio of height covered by body in equal time gap. So if you solve using equation of motion, you will find it to be h1 is to s2 is to s3 and so on to hn. It will comes out to be 1 is to 3 is to 5 and so on to 2n minus 1. So this is also valid for horizontal motion. Let's say for horizontal path, if initial velocity is zero and acceleration is some constant term, so the distance covered by the body for equal time gap, it must be in the ratio of odd number. This is called Galileo's odd number ratio. Is it clear? Just try it down. I'm giving one more relationship related to this. Have you all done to this part? 
Mohammed Umar, just write it down first. Good. Just wait one minute. In this part, I have to find you whether a body is going along a vertical motion and if its velocity initial is zero and it is accelerating with some constant acceleration. And let's say if body is moving along horizontal path, having initial velocity to be zero. In both these two conditions, the ratio of distance or height covered by the body in equal time gap must be in the ratio of odd number. So it would be in the ratio of 1 is to 3 is to 5 is to 7 into 9 and so on. Is it clear? Moment of my in the first one is Initial velocity of the object is zero, and while going down, if you calculate height covered by the body for equal time gap, let's say h1, which is along negative direction, so it will be minus ut minus half g t square. So H1 would be equals to half G T square only. Now suppose if you want to calculate the value of H2. So how will you calculate it? First, you will find total height from this point to this point, And you will subtract this H1 to get this particular value H2. So H2 would be equals to half G total time to travel from this point to this point would be t plus t that would be dt square minus h1 which we have already calculated as half dt square so if if you subtract these two terms it will have 2 square that is 40 square so if you subtract these two terms you will get three times of half gt square. Now, if you divide this equation and this equation, here we have half gt square and here we have three times of half gt square. So half gt square, half gt square will be common. So they will be cancelled out. So what will you left with? One here and three here. It means the ratio of height traveled by the body would be one is to three. Similarly, it would be 5, 7, 9, and so on for later on times. Is it clear? Muhammad Umar. Mohammed Umar, are you there? So this is all about motion by gravity or free fall. Now the next term is non uniformly accelerated motion non uniformly means acceleration 
velocity displacement these all terms would have some variable dependency or time dependency function so in this part we have to define first this what do you mean by instantaneous velocity instantaneous means velocity of a body at fixed instantaneous or at given instantaneous of time or given instant of time so it would be velocity of a body at given instant of time so this let's say v is equals to displacement over time to time so if you suppose to make this particular velocity to be instantaneous it means at a given point of time so this particular change would tend to zero so for this we use limit delta x tends to zero now i am define you this whole part in calculus term will define you nothing but differentiation of x with respect to t so this expression is termed as instantaneous velocity so for the any term or for any of the points it to be instantaneous just differentiate it and then put the value of the required expression you will get instantaneous value of that particular physical quantity similarly if you want to calculate average velocity so which would be equals to net displacement over time taken so it will be x at some final time minus x at some initial time divided by time final minus time initial similarly if there would be velocity so how to calculate average term so it will be v dt integration divided by dt integration so this is how we calculate instantaneous velocity and average velocity next is for acceleration or instantaneous acceleration it would be dv over dt when velocity would be time dependent function and it would be v dv by dx when velocity would be x dependent function and similarly if you want to calculate average acceleration it would be velocity at some final time minus velocity at some initial time divided by time final minus time initial or you will use a times dt integration divided by dt integration this is how we define some of the instantaneous velocity acceleration average velocity average acceleration neda is it clear yes yeah. okay mohammad amar just ask i define it in later on is it clear till this part do you have any doubt in this whole term mohammad umar oh good very good just listen again first whenever you have to calculate instantaneous velocity which means 
velocity of a body at a given instant of time. Given instant means given point of time. Let's say at two second, at three second, at zero second. So how will you define it? Velocity is nothing but rate of change of displacement. So it will be delta x over delta t. So if I have to put, if I have to define this particular term to be instantaneous, you have to change this delta t to be very small that it tends to just point. So we have to apply limit delta t tends to zero. Now this whole expression is nothing but differentiation of x with respect to t. So just forget about it and use this concept. So whenever you have to calculate instantaneous part, first of all, just differentiate the function and put the value of time, you will get the instantaneous velocity, instantaneous speed, instantaneous acceleration. Is it clear now? Now the next part is, whenever you have to find initial value of any given quantity, for initial value of any quantity, just put t e is equals to zero. In that given expression, it will define you initial position, initial velocity, and initial acceleration as well. First of all, write it down. I'm giving you some questions related to this. Average value of any function is defined for interval of duration. So whenever you have given position, first find this particular position for t final, then find this particular position for t initial, and put this all down in this equation, you will find average velocity. I'm giving one example how to solve this. Just wait. Have you all done till this part? Yes, sir. Mohammed Umar. Good. If displacement is T Q minus four T square plus three t minus two. Fine. First, initial velocity. 
second. Velocity at t is equals to two second. Third, at its velocity between t is equals to one second and t is equals to two second. So how to define it? I'm solving. Let's say we have x is equals to t cube minus 4t squared plus 3t minus 2. So first of all, you have to calculate velocity. So I'll define you. Whenever you have to calculate velocity, just differentiate this placement with respect to time. So due to which, just differentiate it. In this first part, we have t raised to three. So according to the rule, if you have to differentiate x raised to n, it will be n times of x to the power n minus one. So it will be n x n minus one minus four to be constant. So it will be n x n minus one plus three to be constant. Exponential is one. So it will be one e one minus one. And last minus two, which is a constant term. So its differentiation would be zero. So this expression is nothing but velocity. So on simplifying, you will get 3t square minus of 8t plus 3 as velocity. In this first example, first part, we have to calculate initial velocity. Joseph, what do you mean by initial velocity? At which instant? it is said to be initial velocity. Sir, from the starting point? For which time? Of an object. For which time? Whenever you have to calculate the initial value, put E is equal to... Yusuf? Yes, sir, got it. So if you put t to be zero, you will get initial velocity to be three meter per second. Neda, is it clear? Yes. Riba, any doubt? No, sir. Similarly, if you have to find velocity at two seconds, so just put the value of t to be two seconds in this given expression. So it will be v is equals to three times two square minus eight into two plus three. Two square is four into three is 12 plus three, 15 and eight into two is 16. So minus 16 plus 15 will be minus one meter per second. Is it clear? Mohammed Amir? Yes, Should I repeat? This four or is it clear? Yes. Now the next or third part is we have to calculate average value. For which I have defined you a formula. Whenever you have to calculate average term, first find displacement for final time 
initial time and just put all the values in this expression. So let's say the initial and this expression is one second. So just find x initial from here. It will be one q minus four times one squared plus three times one minus two. So on simplifying, it will be one minus four plus three minus two. So it will be just minus two. Similarly, if you put t final to be three seconds, so it will be x final is equals to three q minus four into three square plus three into three minus two. Three q is twenty seven. 3 squared 9 into 4 is minus 36. 3 into 3 is 9. So 9, 27 would become 36 and 36 cancel out. So you will get just minus 2 meter. Is it clear till this part? Yes. Now, if you put all these values in average velocity term, it will be x final minus x initial divided by b e final minus b e initial. x final is minus 2 meter and x initial is also minus 2. b e final is 3 second and b e initial is 1. So minus 2 and minus 2 will give you just 0 meter per second. It means average velocity for the interval of one second and three seconds would be zero for this problem. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Muhammad Umar, do you have still any doubt? Good. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, If velocity or if there is expression in terms of velocity and you have to calculate average velocity, in that case, we use the second formula, that is the integration part. But in this part, we have in terms of displacement. So we have to use that. Okay, What is given in this particular question, whether it is displacement or velocity? Muhammad Umar. So to find this particular average velocity, we have two different formula. 
first one is in terms of displacement and second one in terms of velocity. So what we have given in the question, whether it is term of velocity or displacement. So which formula do you use? First one or the second one? Good. Sir, how long will it take to finish this chapter? Just one class. Okay, sir. In next class, uh, we will finish this whole and we will start the new chapter, four chapters. That is vector. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. So, do you have any doubt to this whole part to any one of you? Yes, sir. No, sir. Okay, so just revise this whole concept and try to do more and more problems related to this. In next class, I will define you some of more problems related to this particular in non informally accelerating motion. Then I will define you graph and then we will start new chapter that is chapter number four. I will define you relative motion in next chapter as a whole, one dimension and two dimension combined. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay then. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, Mamba Dumar, do you want to ask something? In next chapter, that is in vector. We have relative motion in one dimension in this part. And we have relative motion to dimension in the next chapter. So I will define you these two concepts to work together. No. Okay, just revise this whole part. I will define you in the next class. Okay. Allah is Good night.